Good evening. Thunderstorms and rain are tonight providing new hazards on the Adelaide Hills fire ground as the bushfire crisis rolled into day six. Rain has helped extinguish a majority of the flames, but authorities remain on high alert. To bring you the latest on the day's developments, we have reporters across the fire ground. Let's go straight to Brenton Ragless, who's at Inglewood. Brenton, what's the latest there? Yes, good evening, Kate. The heavens opened here on the fire ground in the early afternoon and brought some relief to the crews, but the storm brought with it lightning, which has caused other fires in the region. Thankfully, no serious damage has been caused, but it has been a day of significant developments. The CFS has confirmed 95% of the fire has now been contained. The emergency declaration for the area has been revoked and the number of homes destroyed has been revised down to 32. Most roads around the fire ground have been reopened and the Queen sent a message of support and Prime Minister Tony Abbott announced he'll tour the fire ground tomorrow. Personally speaking, I'm continually overwhelmed that we've escaped this tragedy with no loss of human life. Let's now go straight to Virginia Langerberg for the latest on the weather conditions on the fire ground. Virginia, what can you tell us? Well, Brenton, it's certainly been a day of weather extremes. Firstly, the heat and now the thunderstorm clouds have rolled in, but it was much hotter than predicted. Adelaide in the city, 42.2 degrees was the top, much higher than the forecast top of 38 degrees. Now, these thunderstorms cl clouds have brought with them plenty of thunder and lightning, as you said a little earlier, but also uh, some patchy rain, but it has only hit parts of this fire ground. Uh, there have been three weather stations set up uh, in and around uh, the fire ground here around the Adelaide Hills and to paint the picture Birdwood uh, has received close to 25 millimetres in just 40 minutes this afternoon. The other side of the fire ground at uh, One Tree Hill, close to 12 millimetres, and then Upper Hermitage uh, has received zero in its gauges. Now, there remains a severe thunderstorm warning for much of the state, including here in the Adelaide Hills, the Mount Lofty Ranges. It is warning of uh, damaging wind gusts of up to 120 kilometres per hour. That warning is still current for the next half hour, but so far we haven't seen uh, gusts to that effect uh, here where we are standing or uh, for much of the Adelaide Hills so far. So that might be revised in the next half hour or so. But definitely some widespread lightning uh, here over the fire ground, which has been causing issues for for our fire crews and uh, on the back of today tomorrow we are expecting some showers and then rain by Friday and Saturday so we're all hanging out for that Brenton yeah yeah indeed thank you Virginia well a moment today that will stay with me forever when I heard cheers that were echoed through the ranges when the rain finally came down the premier was among those who celebrated being sodden on the blackened earth Almost a week after this catastrophic blaze began, finally some relief. At the moment the rain is uh, the only thing we could wish for and I'm just, uh, I, I can't, I'm just uh, a little bit emotional at the moment because uh, it's been uh, a hard couple of days. The heavens opening up just as Premier Jay Weatherall entered the enormous Samson Flat fire ground. He chatted with volunteers and inspected some of the destroyed homes. We've got some news of some pretty heavy winds coming in, so it's tinged with a little bit of concern, but uh, it's great that we're wet at the moment. The heavy downpour just after lunch helping weary firefighters gain the upper hand. The fire ground is 95% uh, is contained. But the much needed weather change was also a curse. Storm clouds brought with them lightning strikes, sparking multiple grass fires. There are some new fires starting, I don't know the exact number, uh, they're initiated by lightning but uh, the brigades will uh, react to those as they, as they normally would. Heavy rains also catching some crews off guard. This truck became bogged while attending a grass fire at Gawler South and needed a tow. The volunteers lending the professionals a hand. It's not the only hazard for crews, strong winds forecast increasing the danger of falling trees. This is Hannaford Hump Road at Samson Flat, which is still closed to the public because it's far too dangerous. Hundreds of trees have either fallen over or dropped limbs. Many of them are still smouldering within. Even police officers guarding the closed roads aren't immune. 
Nine News was there moments after a tree branch came crashing down on the back of a patrol car with officers inside. Mate, there's people worse off than us. Commissioner Gary Byrne says it's a warning for everyone in and around the 12,500 hectare fire ground for weeks to come. If you want a very good example of uh, why people need to take care in that area and why we are controlling the road so carefully, um, there it is. The reduced threat allowing a better look at the destruction left behind. Much of it so devastating, it almost broke even hardened firefighting veterans. Emotional for that lady who's lost her house and everything else like that, you know, you just we've had the time to relax and think about it and it really did, did hit home. And you know what, we tried our best and, I, and she believes that and knows that. He won't be the only one. Eddie Godfrey, Nine News. Let's now go to Eddie Godfrey at the Incident Command Centre at One Tree Hill. Uh, Eddie, what now for our fire crews? Well, for instance, about 500 firefighters will remain on the fire ground tonight and many will stay here over the coming days as they monitor this situation. Tomorrow, though, as you mentioned, they'll be joined by Prime Minister Tony Abbott. The Premier, Jay Weatherill, confirmed his visit here this afternoon. Now, the Prime Minister will be able to witness firsthand the destruction that's occurred throughout the Adelaide Hills since last Friday. It'll be his first official comment on the matter since it began and it's also hoped he'll offer some sort of assistance for the victims of this blaze. Brenton. All right, thanks, Eddie. Well, the job is not completely done, but tonight, for the first time in nearly a week, firefighters are getting some very hard earned, in, very hard earned rest. Samantha Vardis joins us from Gummaraka CFS station. Sam, what are the crews up to there? Well, Brenton, there is a slight sense of relief in the air here tonight. Hundreds of firefighters from South Australia, New South Wales and Victoria have just returned here to Gumaraka Community Centre from the fire ground. Now, this is, of course, thanks to that huge downpour that we experienced just a few hours ago. Now, this, of course, came as a blessing in disguise for some of these firefighters who have now been given the opportunity of some downtime. They've also been provided a meal here at the Gumaraka Community Centre, which has, of course, been provided by the volunteers here in the community and we spoke to them just a short time ago. Take a listen to how appreciative they were. Yeah, it has been flood out and doing the best we can to get it out. Yeah, and obviously the rain puts some downtime. Yes, definitely helps. It's just something so small that we can give back um, because they've saved our community. Now, for dessert, firefighters will be treated to that Transformers birthday cake, which, of course, was donated by six-year-old Jackson just a few days ago. Now, at 7 o'clock, there will be a shift change where around 500 firefighters from the day shift will be replaced by a night shift team of around 150 firefighters. And depending on the weather, some of these guys could actually go out again. But for now, I think it's time for some well-deserved rest, Brenton. Yeah, too right. Thank you, Sam. Well, as the threat eased, more and more residents were able to return home. Let's go now to Alice Monfries. And Alice, are most of the locals now being allowed back through the roadblocks to their properties? Well, Brenton, after five days, many residents finally returned to their homes after police reopened 15 roads into the fire ground this morning. They had planned to reopen another 11 by now, but this has been held up by today's extreme weather. The rain has made the roads incredibly slippery and the danger of lightning strikes has forced crews which were clearing trees from those roads to stop that work for now. But for those who have made it back to their homes, the painstaking recovery now begins. 15 years of hard work lost in minutes. Tragic really, it's yeah, especially when you can't do anything. Brothers Matt and Ben Scott were forced to watch their carpentry business burn to the ground when the blaze tore through Matt's Kersbrook property on Saturday morning. Under the charred remains, expensive machinery and equipment worth up to $150,000. 15 years me and Ben and my brother have been here, so um, yeah, but it's uh, the cabinet making shop, like the sun, the panel store and all that summer there. Um, but yeah, we'll, uh, we'll keep, keep pushing on. While Matt's home was spared, almost all of his land has been destroyed, on which he and his brother are both fifth generation farmers. They're now vowing to get their business back up and running within a month. Get temporary, temporary set up so all our builders aren't stressing and obviously everyone we work for aren't worrying that we've we haven't disappeared, but it's going to be a bit tough. Dale Anderton fared well from the fires, but it wasn't because of luck. The Kersbrook local single-handedly protected his family home as flames raced towards him. And all of a sudden, it was it was in the trees within 30 seconds, and it was just roaring up, and the wind was 
just unbelievable. And then as the fire comes through, it just even got stronger. After doing all he could, overcome by smoke and radiant heat, he sheltered in his fire bunker as flames raged around him. I shut the door and it's cool and it's nice, but the noise was unbelievable. It was like a roar, like it was just roaring out there. The number of homes lost in the bushfire has been revised down to 32. Gummaraka Hospital is still affected. 29 people have been relocated and the facility isn't taking any new patients. If Hills residents were in any doubt, they're in the thoughts of thousands. This from Her Majesty the Queen. Our thoughts are with the families who have lost their homes and personal possessions in the fires. Alice Monfries, Nine News. Well, with much of the fire threat now reduced, the police investigation into the cause of this inferno is ramping up. Police reporter Ben Avery joins us now with some exclusive details. Ben, what do you know? Well, Brenton, I can tell you that major crime detectives are spearheading what's known as Task Force Samson. It is a task force that's going to investigate exactly how this fire started in this area on Friday afternoon. And it's going to focus on that property on Chiller Beer Road and in particular that uh, incinerator that has been linked to the starting of this fire. Police know that there are several people that live on that property and they need to try and determine who, if anyone, lit what and when. Now, we also know that this task force is going going to investigate exactly how much damage has been done across the Adelaide Hills and whether or not it was that one ignition point that was responsible or whether or not there were a number of other smaller fires in other areas that perhaps contributed to that one larger disaster. Now it is very important for police to know that because when they do get to the point, if they get to the point where they charge someone, they need to know exactly how much damage that person caused, whether or not they caused all of the damage across the Adelaide Hills or just a proportion of it. But Brenton, a prosecution, if it ever happens, could be some time away with police telling us that the investigation could be very long and very complex. Mm. Yeah, I would expect so. Ben, thank you.